Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the moment you've all been waiting for, my 2022 housing market forecast. Let's get ready to look at some data. Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander from The Brokerage and your host of Orange County Housing Market News, your one-stop shop for all things Orange County real estate. So on this show, I go over local trends happening in the market, I interview other experts in the field, and then I go over some tricks and tips for both buyers and sellers to help you out in today's market to be successful. So if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, this is a great place to start. So make sure you hit that subscribe, like button. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell button as well. That way you're notified every time a new episode's released. So on today's episode, like you just heard at the beginning, we're gonna be going over my predictions for the 2022 housing market. So I'm gonna go over where we're ending this year, how that's setting us up for next year, and then I'm gonna talk about what I think supply, demand, interest rates, appreciation, and the top five risks to the housing market will be next year. And then ultimately, what does that mean for both buyers and sellers? So hopefully you'll be able to get some great information out of this. And if you are thinking about getting into the market next year, this is a great episode for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by looking at where we are today, how we're going to finish off this year, because that's really going to set us up for what to expect in 2022. So for Orange County, let's go ahead and look at the supply first. So like I predicted in my November update, supply has plummeted significantly over the last two weeks by about 19%. So we are already dealing with the lowest inventory on record in Orange County, and it just went even lower. So right now, we are under 1,500 homes active on the market at this point, which is the lowest it's ever been. And when you look in terms of history, a normal year at this time, we usually have about 5,300 homes on the market. So we're looking at about 268% less homes on the market right now than we typically see. So needless to say, we are very low on inventory and still in an extremely hot seller's market. Now let's go look on the demand side. So on the demand side, demand has also dropped, but only by about 4% over the last two weeks. Typically you see about an 8% drop towards the end of November, but we only saw a 4% drop. And the reason being interest rates. So they really haven't shifted much over the last six months. They've been hovering right around that 3%, which is extremely attractive to a lot of buyers. There's a lot of people trying to take advantage of these rates before they start going up next year. So right now the demand has only dropped slightly while supply has plummeted, which is going to put us in an even hotter seller's market than we already were last month. And we're going to be finishing up this year with the hottest seller's market we've seen in the winter in anybody's recent memory. So let's just look at this graph up here just to kind of show you. So depending if you own a home already or if you're looking at homes in certain price points, this can give you an idea of how long homes are lasting on the market. And for those of you that can't see this graph that might be listening to this on podcast, all you really need to know is that anything under $1.5 million in Orange County right now is going on the market and off the market in about two weeks or less, which is insane. It's completely unprecedented. We're in a hotter seller's market than we were last month, and the average days on market for all of Orange County is just hovering right over 20 days right now, and everything is going really quickly. Okay, so that brings us to 2022. So let's go over what I expect to happen on all fronts of the housing market in 2022 and let's go ahead and start with the demand side first. So demand is going to be starting out extremely strong in 2022 and the biggest reason interest rates. So like I just said, interest rates are still hovering around all-time lows. As long as they're hovering around these all-time lows, you're going to have buyers trying to take advantage of this while it's still around because enough people have now realized that these interest rates can't hang around forever. There is going to be some increases happening this year, so they want to take advantage of these low rates while they can. So that's going to be one of the biggest drivers of demand starting out the year. However, that's not the only thing that's going to be driving demand next year. Another big thing that will be driving demand is the largest demographic patch ever to be recorded in the United States, that's millennials, that's like myself, are going to be entering peak home buying years. So millennials have been sitting on the sideline for the most part, but 
they are starting to get married, their families are expanding, they're having kids, they're buying pets, they want to find some place of their own, move out of mom and dad's house, move out of that one bedroom apartment they've been renting for years, and find a property of their own. So right now, demand for millennials is going to be extremely strong next year, as well as over the next couple years, and we don't really see that fizzling out until at least 2025. So millennials are really gonna help prop up the housing market over the next couple years because of their sheer numbers. So right now it's estimated that millennials are about 72.8 million strong, and they make up over 35% of the current workforce. And over the pandemic, they have been paying off their student debt. They've been increasing their wealth by either living at home or because of the stock market or their job and saving money, increasing wealth. And like I said, their families are expanding. So many of them at this point are at that point where they want to go out and start purchasing homes. So that trend is not going to go away anytime soon. And it was one of the big drivers in the 2021 housing market as well. Millennials were buying houses like crazy last year, and it's only going to continue into 2022. But wait, there's more. On top of millennials and on top of low interest rates, we also have a large portion of institutional investors that are snatching up properties left and right right now, trying to figure out ways and ways to shelter their money from inflation. And as we've seen, and it's starting to become more evident, this transitory inflation that's been talked about is really starting to turn into a longer term inflation problem. And to shelter some of your money from inflation, one thing investors do is they buy real estate because if inflation happens, home values typically go up as well as rental prices typically go up. So when someone invests in real estate, they're getting those profits from both sides if they're trying to rent out these properties. So you're seeing a lot of people just buying up properties and using them as insurance policies against inflation. So those three things are really going to be driving the demand side of things for the housing market next year. Okay, so before we go on the supply side, I do wanna bring up interest rates one more time because I do wanna go over my predictions of what interest rates will be doing as we go through 2022. So if you look at this graph right here, you can see that all the major players in the real estate industry by the end of next year, quarter three of next year, are predicting somewhere between 3.5 and 3.7% interest rates for a 30-year fixed mortgage. And that is something that I completely agree with. Interest rates need to go up at this point to really cool off the housing market. And we've already seen from the Fed that they're starting to get more eager at this point to start raising rates because they do see this inflation becoming more of a problem. So I'm even more confident by the end of next year, we are going to see rates go up. Are they gonna raise reach four or five percent. I don't think so, but I do believe they are going to be somewhere between 3.5 and 3.7, like most experts are predicting by the end of the next year, which will help slowly start cooling off this housing market that's been on fire for almost two years now. So now let's go ahead and look at the supply side of things. So like I already stated, we're going to be starting off 2022 with the lowest supply of inventory in the housing market we've ever seen. But the big question is, why is supply so low and why is it staying so low? So I wanted to go over that and break that down a little bit so hopefully you can get a better understanding of why we continue to have this supply problem. So there's really two main reasons that supply has remained so low, not only during the pandemic, but even leading up to the pandemic, we were still having supply issues and the pandemic just really made everything exponentially worse. So the number one reason is people are not moving as often as they used to. And there's a lot of reasons for this. So number one would be that people are not downsizing when they become empty nesters. So typically in the past, when the kids left to go to college to make lives of their own, a lot of parents would go ahead and sell their house downsized to something smaller that just fit the two of them, and that freed up some inventory in the market. However, a lot of parents are not doing that anymore. They're keeping their house, whether it was because they were afraid of what happened with the last housing crisis, or they decided they wanted to stay there, fix some things up, and just have a couple extra rooms in case the kids come back to visit. Whatever the case, people are not selling as often as they used to. 
Another big reason is that there are more multi-generational households forming every single year. So kids are coming back to live with the parents, their parents are coming back to live with them. So people are keeping hold of these larger houses longer because we have multi-generation families living more frequently in these houses. And then another reason people are staying in their houses longer that has been brought about by the pandemic is a lot of people have refinanced over the last two years. So because we've had such low rates, a lot of people have taken that refinance, locked in that low rate, and that just gives them one more financial reason not to move anywhere because they don't wanna lose that low rate. And the final reason, which might not be as obvious that people are not moving as often, is because they're scared. And what I mean by that is people right now that are thinking about moving see how low inventory is right now, and they know they can sell their house, they know they can sell their house quickly, but that's the problem. They can sell their house quickly, but they're buying in the same market that they're selling in. So they're scared that they're not going to be able to find a new place to live quick enough and then have to sell their home and not have any place to go. So a lot of people that have been thinking about selling their home are holding off until inventory goes up, but that's just creating this problem that continues to compound on itself. People aren't selling homes, there's not enough homes on the market, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So until people start getting out there and and realizing there's ways to actually structure contracts to be able to make sure that you don't sell your home until you've secured a new home for you to live in and you can go through all of that and do it legally in a contract to protect yourself when they start realizing those options, then people are selling. But that information is just not talked about enough in the real estate industry. So if you are interested, if you're in that boat where you've been thinking about selling your house, you wanna take advantage of this hot market, but you're scared you're not going to be able to find a new place to live, make sure you check out this video link I have up here above where I go over, it's a two-part series. There's a lot of great information in there on how to sell and buy a new house at the same time while keeping yourself protected. There are plenty of ways to do it within the contract during escrow to make sure that you're safe, keep yourself protected, and you don't end up without a place to live. So definitely check that out if you've been thinking of moving, that's one of the main reasons you haven't. Now that was reason number one. So the second big reason we're seeing such a supply issue on the housing market right now has to do with the last housing crash that happened almost 20 years ago at this point. Ever since the last housing crash, we have not been building enough homes to keep up with demand. Every single year, we've been underbuilding. And over the years, almost 20 years at this point, that's led to a giant backlog of homes that should have hit the market that haven't. We're looking at millions and millions of homes throughout the US right now that should have been built if we were building what we typically did from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s that just weren't built ever since the last housing crash, and that's caused a big supply issue. Now, they're finally starting to ramp up production over the last two or three years, but it's going to take a while for them to get enough inventory on the market to really start to satisfy how much demand there is right now for new homes. So over the next couple of years, it's something you definitely wanna keep track of, of how many new developments and how many new buildings are going up, because if that starts to increase more significantly, then you'll start to see some of these supply issues start to alleviate themselves over the next couple of years, but it's not something that's going to to happen overnight. It's something that's going to take multiple years of them overbuilding at this point to be able to really meet that demand that they haven't been doing for almost two decades at this point. Okay, so supply is going to start out this year at the lowest level we've ever seen pretty much anywhere in Southern California. On top of that, it doesn't look like the supply issues are going to be solved overnight. It's going to take years to be able to get some of these issues fixed. So I do think supply is going to remain relatively low for the rest of the year. And on the other side, again, demand is extremely high right now going into 2022 and interest rates are still extremely low. Yes, they are predicted to go up by the end of next year. However, they're still historically low, even if they go up to 3.5 to 3.7, which is is going to keep that demand high, millennials keeping that demand high, institutional investors keeping that demand high. So demand, again, I don't believe is going to be going away anytime soon next year as well. 
So what does this lead to? Well, let's go ahead and look at what the experts are saying to expect for appreciation next year throughout the US. So here's the graph right here of the top experts in the housing market. And the average prediction they have is that we'll see right around 5.1% appreciation over the next 12 months in the housing market. Yes, you heard me correctly. We are going to see home prices go up even more. So if you're a buyer, that's something that you do have to be concerned about. However, we're not going to see those double digit growth like we have seen over the last two years. It looks like they're predicting at this point that they're going to start seeing that level off a little bit, which ultimately is very good for the housing market. We've been way too hot for way too long. We need to be able to cool off a little bit to make sure we don't overheat and create a bubble in the market. And right now, I don't see a bubble happening. I don't think we're in a bubble, but it could get there if we see that double digit growth again for the third year in a row by the end of the year. However, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, so by this point, you might be thinking, to yourself this guy is talking all sunshine and rainbows and he's a real estate agent of course he's going to tell us the market's going to be great next year however i do see some risks that could pop up next year that could impact the housing market so i do want to be realistic and i want to go over those risks with you and i'm going to start with the least risky going to the most risky in my opinion and then we'll finally get to the part where i go over my predictions for the housing market and what you should do as a buyer and seller so let's start going over the risks okay so the the first one and the least risky one that I do want to bring up and really the only reason I want to bring it up is because I'm still seeing news articles about it those clickbait headlines they are finally becoming less frequent but I do want to bring it up and that is foreclosures so are we gonna have a foreclosure crisis in 2022 we're gonna see a flood of homes hit the market and all of a sudden see housing prices tank because of that the simple answer is no the forbearance period ended a couple months ago. We haven't seen foreclosures uptick significantly since then, and we're not expecting to. And there's a couple big reasons. Number one is because of so much appreciation that's happened over the last two years, people have a lot of equity built up in their home. 93% of people that were in the forbearance program have at least 10% equity in their home. And why is that important? That means if they had to go ahead and sell their house, if they still couldn't find a job, they weren't able to pay their mortgage, they're more likely to sell their house, take that small profit versus go through the foreclosure process and lose money and have to go through the whole thing with the bank. Because ultimately, they have so much equity built up in their home, it makes no sense for them to go through foreclosure. They're just gonna sell their house like a normal sale, put it on the market, because the market is so crazy right now, they'll get it under contract in two weeks, sell it, make some money, and then be able to figure out what to do from there, whether it's rent for a while and then buy a new house. Either way, it's not going to affect the inventory level significantly. So on top of having a giant amount of equity when they come out of forbearance, the people that are currently exiting forbearance are also exiting on good terms, which means they've either caught up on their mortgage payments, paid off their house entirely, already sold their house, or they've worked out a payment with their banks to be able to put any missed payments on the back of their loan and they're caught up at that point so they can start paying their mortgage again. Overwhelmingly, this is going to be the majority of people coming out of forbearance. Yes, there are going to be a few, unfortunately, that will end up losing their home because they didn't have enough equity, they weren't able to find a job, they weren't able to make their mortgage payment, but that percent is so small and the housing supply is so low right now that just going to be a tiny little blip in the radar of the overall inventory in the housing market. So we will see foreclosures go up slightly next year. However, you really have to start watching out over this next year for those clickbait articles where you start seeing foreclosures up 50%, 100%, 200% because you have to take that into context. Compared to the last couple years, if foreclosures go up even slightly, even though it's way below the historic norm for foreclosures, people are gonna make that into a big deal because foreclosures have been so low because of that foreclosure moratorium that any slight bump in foreclosures is going to look like a giant percentage increase. And a lot of people are gonna be making headlines and clickbait articles about that to try to scare you. So make sure you actually look at the data and the data shows time and time again that foreclosures are not going to be an issue going into 2022. 
Okay, so risk number two, and remember, again, this is not a very significant risk in my opinion, but risk number two would be a COVID outbreak again that would shut everything down and cause issues in the housing market. Now, obviously with new variants popping up, it seems like every few months, we're starting to get used to this typical cycle where you see a new variant pop up, it flares up, it goes down, and that hasn't really impacted the housing market. However, there's always a slight possibility that some super variant pops up that really makes people go back to lockdown and have big issues next year. However, the data is showing, the scientists are showing that yes, we might have more variants that pop up. However, it's not something that's going to bring the country back to its knees and have everything shut down again. So even though there's always a possibility, the possibility and that percentage is so small, I really don't see it as a major risk factor for next year, but it is something you definitely wanna keep an eye on because if something pops up that is significant, that can not only affect the real estate market, but the stock market as well as everything else. And that actually brings me to my third risk, which is a stock market crash that could happen next year. So if you've been following the stock market, you probably know that prices are a little frothy right now. We've had a lot of valuations go up. We've had a lot of money made over the last two years during COVID in the stock market. And there's more and more concern that we're going to see some type of large correction in the near future. So I do think this is a legitimate risk that could happen. However, when you look at that compared to the housing market, if the stock market was to tumble, it's going to impact those higher end sales first because the majority of people that have a lot of money in the stock market are typically buying more expensive homes. So if you see the stock market start to tumble, expect to see the high end homes to be affected most by that. But the longer we have a stock market tumble and the lower it goes, the more you're gonna see that trickle down to lower and lower priced homes. So it's something that you definitely need to pay attention to. It's something that I'm paying attention to because if a stock market crash does come, it could definitely impact the housing market. Now there is a slight positive to a stock market crash for the housing market, and that would be that interest rates would probably stay lower than expected because the chances of the Fed raising rates and raising rates significantly during a stock market crash is probably pretty low. So if the stock market crashes, you can expect rates to stay a little bit lower, a little bit longer, which is going to help out some people, especially in the lower price points. However, you are gonna start seeing people's 401k shrink, their net worth shrink. So buying homes might be out of the question for especially those high-end homes, but almost any price point if we see a major correction. So definitely something you wanna make sure you keep your eye on. So now let's go ahead and get to risk number four. And these are starting to get to the point where it's something that I don't think is likely, but it's definitely something that I'm concerned with. I'm watching very carefully because it's something that I could see pop up and could see impact the housing market significantly if it were to get out of hand. So the easiest way to describe risk number four, toilet paper. So what do I mean by that? Well, you saw how crazy people got about getting toilet paper during the pandemic. It was a mob mentality. Once you heard about it on the news, everybody went out to go to try to buy it. It was out of stock, so they went to other stores. They were buying as much as they could, and it created a panic in the market. And that is something that I could see possibly happen next year if we're continuing to see appreciation happen, and all of a sudden you start seeing a little bit more inventory than usual hit the market, you might start to see people say, hey, are we at the top of a market? Should I put my house in the market? My neighbor just did, and he made $100,000 over asking, but my other neighbor just did, and they only made $25,000 over asking. Are we reaching that peak? Maybe I should get my house in the market. I've been thinking about it, so why don't I go ahead and do it now? If you have enough people thinking like that and you start seeing inventory hit the market quickly, you could have that mob mentality where everybody's trying to take advantage. They think it's the top of the market. Everybody tries to put their home on the market within a few month period and that drives up supply so significantly that it really flattens out the market. Now, I don't think that's going to cause a crash in the market. However, I could see appreciation affected by the end of the year if you start to get this supply flooding the market because people are concerned that we've reached the top and they want to try to cash out now while they can. So that's something that I'm concerned with. That's something I'm going to be tracking. I'm going to be watching how many homes are being placed on the market each week. And if all of a sudden you start seeing a significant increase, a lot more than usual, you'll be the first to know if you watch this channel and subscribe, but it's something that I'm definitely watching on a weekly basis. 
Okay, so that brings me to the fifth and final risk, as well as the most risky thing that I see happening in the housing market next year that could really negatively impact what the housing market does, and that's interest rates. So like I said at the beginning of this, we are expecting interest rates to go up anywhere from about 3.5 to 3.7% by the end of next year. And that alone is not very concerning because even before the pandemic, that's about where we were hovering and we are still in a very hot seller's market market and then the pandemic hit interest rates went lower and everything just got accelerated by a hundredfold however because we've had so much appreciation over the last two years people are going to be more sensitive to any movement whatsoever in interest rates. So my fear right now is that when interest rates start climbing, people are gonna start realizing how high home prices are. They're gonna be out of reach for some people if interest rates go from 3.1 to 3.5, and you could see a pullback on the market on the demand side of things because people just can't afford the property or they think 3.5 or 3.7 is just way too high because they've been used to such low interest interest rates for the last two years and they get out of the housing market and because of that you can start seeing supply slowly start to increase and the reason I brought up this risk last is because it can kind of snowball on top of some of the other ones so what I mean by that is if interest rates start rising and you start seeing buyers pull back to purchasing homes you're going to start seeing the inventory rise. As you see inventory rise, you could have that mob mentality happen where people start seeing more and more inventory hit the market. You start to see demand go down a little bit and people get scared that we're at the top of the market. They're starting to place their home on the market more and more frequently, driving up supply even more. And then on top of that, you have those sellers that have been sitting on the sideline because there hasn't been enough supply that now see that there's some supply in the market and they also put their homes on the market. All of that combined can really create the perfect storm to really drive up supply significantly enough to really start impacting the market where you see not only a little bit of a flat line, but possibly a small decrease in appreciation by the end of the year. Now, is that probable? Probably not. A lot of things would have to happen to get to a point where supply is so high and demand drops so significantly that we really see anything that's going to be impactful in the market. But I can see it impacting the appreciation rate and getting it to more of a net zero by the end of the year if we have all of these happen at once. Okay, so before I go over my predictions, I just wanna let you know that when I'm talking to my buyer or seller clients, I tell them do not let predictions drive your decisions because ultimately they're just predictions. I could be wrong, I don't have a crystal ball. When you're buying or selling a home, you wanna make those decisions based on your life circumstances, your finances, as well as what your long-term goals are, not what you think might happen because you're not a speculator in the market when you're buying homes Typically you're buying for the long run, you're buying it to have a better place to live for your family. So you wanna make decisions based on the information you have now. If you can afford a mortgage in the area you want, there's no reason to wait to buy. And the same thing, if you need to sell your house or you wanna sell your house and the financial side of it looks good to you, then it's up to you to make that decision. So again, take what I say with a grain of salt because unless you're a real estate investor who's doing speculation and doing a lot of short-term projects, these predictions probably won't have a significant impact on you going forward into 2022. So let's go ahead and go over what I expect to happen. So like I said a couple times already, we're going to be starting this next year with the lowest supply ever, a very high demand and very low interest rates. So it's almost impossible for me at this point to tell you that we're not going to be going into next year in an extremely hot seller's market. In fact, I believe the first six months of next year, we're going to see the majority of the entire year's appreciation, probably about 75% of it, because there's so much demand, such little supply, homes are gonna be driven up in value relatively quickly over those first couple months. However, once we get towards the end of spring into summer, where traditionally you see more people put their homes on the market as kids are getting out of school because people wanna be able to buy and sell homes during the summertime when kids aren't in school, it makes everything a lot easier. You're going to see more homes than usual hit the market during that time, which is going to start slowing the market down a little bit on top of that, 
you will start seeing interest rates at that point go up a little bit more, which is going to slow down demand. And it's really just gonna put us from an extremely hot seller's market back down to a regular seller's market where you're still seeing appreciation happen. But over the back half of 2022, I don't expect to see as much appreciation as more homes hit the market, demand slowly goes down a little bit because those interest rates, and you start to see that more normal market cycle develop as we enter fall and winter of next year. So that's my predictions of what the market is going to look like over the next 12 months. And like I was saying before, in the United States, the experts are predicting right around 5.1% appreciation. In Orange County, however, because it is a more desirable area to live compared to a lot of the U.S., I'm predicting that we're probably going to have somewhere between 6 and 8% appreciation. Again, the majority of that happening in the first six months of the year and then slowing down towards the end of the year. Okay, so if you've stuck with me this long, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. So let me go ahead and wrap things up by going over what I recommend doing as both a buyer and a seller in the 2022 market. So let's go ahead and start with sellers first. So sellers, there's a very good chance by the end of next year, your home is going to be worth more than it is today. However, if you're thinking of selling your house next year, my recommendation would be is you'd wanna get it on the market within that first six months because after that, especially if we see high appreciation, which is almost a guarantee at this point based on the market fundamentals going into next year, the higher the chances are that any fluctuation in interest rates, which are predicted to go up by the end of the year, will impact the market more significantly. So if you need to sell your home next year and you can sell it in the first half of the year, that's definitely one you wanna get it on the market. Now, if you're gonna be trying to purchase another home in the same market as you're selling your home, I would probably say you wanna wait until the March timeframe before you get it on the market because that way inventory should be rising on the back end to give you more options to choose from. So that way you're not stuck trying to find a new place to live when there's not enough places to choose from and having to compete with so many more buyers. So that's probably a more ideal time for you to get your house on the market if you're planning to upgrade to a different house or downsize is sometime around the March, April timeframe. If you're not needing to do that upgrade, then you can really get your house on the market anytime between January and again, probably around June. Depending on your appetite for risk, the sooner you get it on the market, the better chance you have of knowing it's gonna be a hot seller's market. The longer you wait, the more chances things can pop up that can derail the market and slow things down. So that's something to definitely consider. Okay, so now for buyers. So buyers, unfortunately, these last two years have been extremely rough on you. I've worked with plenty of buyers and I know how tough it is to purchase a home right now, how crazy it is to try to be able to compete with all these different offers. However, I have to bring you some bad news to let you know that next year, prices are predicted to rise as well as interest rates. For you as a buyer, that means that as that happens, you're gonna be able to afford less home and your mortgage payment every month is going to grow at the same time. So if you're thinking about buying a home next year, your best bet is probably to start getting that pre-approval done now in December so you can hit the ground running in January because even though inventory is extremely low right now, Usually that second or third week of January is when you start seeing it pick up again. So you wanna make sure that you are prepared to place offers quickly. And the only way to do that is to start the process now, get organized now, get that pre-approval from a lender now, and be able to go through and have all your ducks lined up in a row. So if that perfect property does appear sometime early next year, you're able to jump on it and give yourself a better chance of getting it. Now, just to give you a quick dollar example on exactly what this means for you as a buyer, I just wanna pull up this graph right here. So this kind of shows you, if you're trying to purchase a $750,000 home, every time interest rates go up by a quarter of a percent, you're adding about $100 to your monthly mortgage payment. Now, on top of that, you also have to assume that housing prices are also gonna be going up next year. So when you combine that, let's go ahead and assume instead of buying a $700,000 home right now or in January at a 3.1% interest rate, you waited till the end of next year when interest rates are expected to be around that 3.7%. And let's just assume we're only seeing 2% appreciation to be conservative. You can see over the life of your loan, you're gonna be spending over $100,000 more 
on your 30 year fixed mortgage by waiting that extra year. So when you look at it like that, you can see how much money you're spending, not only every month, but over the entirety of that 30 years, just for waiting an additional 12 months. So it's something that you need to go through and again, look at to make sure that if you can afford a place right now, you can afford the payments, you're looking at living there long term, and it makes financial sense for you right now, it's better for you to be looking now and hoping and wishing that some type of catastrophe is gonna happen in the market because the chances of that happening are much smaller than what is most likely going to happen, which is going to be appreciation and interest rates will be going up by the end of the next year. So make sure you're taking all those financials into account when you're looking at and deciding on when you wanna purchase a home. So that pretty much wraps up my 2022 market predictions. I hope you found this information useful. If you do, again, make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe as well as bell button below. I do release a new episode every week, so that way you can get the latest news on what's going on in the Orange County housing market. So until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye.